Oxford, a very, very good morning to all of you. Um, I'd like to start by congratulating Theresa Villiers, Secretary of State at DEFRA, at being back in post. I'd like to wish you all a very happy new year, start of a new decade. And before I start, I'd, I'd like to have a, a shout out to my friend and the president of the Farmers Federation in Australia, Fiona Simpson, and just say to all our Australian farming friends, we are really thinking of you, Australia, today. <laughs> now, the December election was rightly driven by Brexit, the NHS, policing and education. But at the dawn of a new decade, I would say that there is nothing more important to our economy, to our health, to our environment than the very food that we eat. And it is therefore very timely today that Henry Dimbleby will be discussing the first meaningful food strategy in 75 years. Now 2020 for me is about getting Brexit right. And be under no illusion to my fellow farmers, we face the greatest reset in agricultural policy since the 1940s. And it took, and don't let's forget, it took two world wars for the UK and island nation to recognize that food security mattered. In the 1940s, we were actually 30% self-sufficient. Of course, that rose meteorically to the 1980s, where we became 80% self-sufficient. And it was actually the 1947 Agricultural Act that set the tone for what was to happen. We are now relatively stable, around 60% self-sufficiency. But the NFU from day one set three tests that we believe are key to farming thriving post-Brexit. Firstly, achieving free and frictionless trade with our closest trading partner, the European Union, where currently 62% of our exports go. It is absolutely in the economic interests of the European Union and the UK that we agree that free and frictionless trading relationship. Secondly, absolutely vital that we have access to a competent and reliable workforce. And thirdly, an agricultural policy for agricultural purposes. We've always believed the policy is like a three-legged stool. Three legs and the stool stands up, two, and it falls over. So firstly, we believe that it should be absolutely about environmental delivery. It should also be about productivity. And I think the difficult nut for us to crack at the moment is volatility, dealing with market failure, dealing with risk management. And my goodness, over the last couple of years, have we seen how that has impacted. As I stand here today, there is definitely um, maybe only just over a third of winter planting done. We potentially have 50% of the potato crop still in the ground. And we feel very strongly that some form of stability payment will be essential to manage our risk. And at the very least, we should be looking to maintain 30% of the current direct support until we have economic certainty. But of course, no farmer wants to farm with support. We all want to achieve a fair return from the supply chain. And a prerequisite of stepping back from direct support has to address the functionality, the transparency, and the fairness of our supply chains. Now, it was 12 months ago that I stood on this very platform declaring that with a willing government, we could achieve net zero in agricultural emissions by 2040. That we could do so by smarter, climate-friendly farming with no need to downsize livestock numbers. We are proud as farmers that the carbon footprint of our cattle is already two and a half times lower than the global average. And we know that there is so much more that we can do. And just to put that into context, there are 287, I'm told by our chief dairy advisor, 287 million dairy cows in the world 
Now, if they were all as efficient as a UK dairy cow, we would only need 70 million. We know that livestock and grass lays are fundamental to successful rotations, to building our soil health, to building our soil fertility and biodiversity, both above and below the ground. So my message to you, Secretary of State, is that this Conservative government can be the global leader, the pioneer that our world so desperately needs. The UK has the responsibility for the next big round of climate change talks. The United Nations climate change talks take place, commonly known as the COP26, in Glasgow this November. Secretary of State, we must grasp this moment with both hands to lead the recovery of our planet. And I passionately believe that UK agriculture can and is ready to help lead and provide the solutions that are needed. I know that farmers are up for this challenge because I've seen it with my own eyes. Recently visiting Paul Hoverson from the Holcomb Estate in Norfolk. Paul Cherry of regenerative agriculture and groundswell fame. I've been lucky enough very recently to be on panels with the amazing livestock farmers, James Evans and Rob Havard. I've visited tomato grower Phil Pearson with his totally circular, climate-friendly tomato business. And the amazing dairy farmers Tim and Mary Mead at Yo Valley, Britain's largest own label yogurt business. Everywhere I go, I meet inspirational farmers who are already delivering world-class, sustainable farming. But I can't stand here today discussing climate change and not mention water scarcity and water security. Now, here we are farming in northwestern Europe, the jewel in the world's crown for food production, enjoying a maritime climate. And there is a moral imperative that we continue to produce food in the UK. And where possible, and what we're good at, we should be striving to produce more. But the fact is, we are wasting our water, one of our most precious and prized natural resources. Henry Dimbleby will make it very clear that no age group is eating enough fruit and vegetables. In fact, many diets are leading to drastic changes in quality of life and life expectancy. The next decade must reconnect each and every one of us with the natural whole foods that we as farmers and growers produce. Moving on from the divisive plant versus meat debate, it's about a healthy, enjoyable, balanced diet. There are no bad whole foods. There are only bad diets. Now, in the UK, we are currently only producing 7% of our fruit and only 53% of our veg, and importing the rest from parts of the world like Israel, Chile, Spain, that are suffering from acute water scarcity. We can and we should drive a horticultural revolution in support of our health and our global environment, but it will need a revolutionary approach to how we plan, protect, and pay our farmers to store water, allowing water to be moved to areas where it is most needed. The Prime Minister has committed a £100 billion spending pledge on transport and data infrastructure. I say today that water should be part of that infrastructure spend. We should be thinking much, much harder about how we would better place water infrastructure to power the change that is needed also to alleviate flood risk, which we have seen devastate so many communities this winter. So in conclusion, Secretary of State, three questions. Firstly, will this government work with us as farmers and growers to drive forward climate and water-friendly food production, sharing our vision for net zero agriculture, enabling productivity improvements, revolutionising water policy with improved infrastructure at its heart. Secondly, and in common with the majority of agricultural sectors in developed economies, 
Will you use the powers contained within the Agricultural Bill to provide a level of financial stability and improve the functionality of our supply chains so that markets work for farmers and consumers? And finally, and in line with my ask of the last 12 months, will the government pull together a council or commission on food standards? to scrutinise trade deals and ensure that we don't end up with a two-tier food system and import food that would be illegal for our farmers to produce here, something that the NFU will never accept. Secretary of State, it's been great to hear verbal commitment from you on our welfare standards, but this ambition must be hardwired across government and it must be backed by legislation in the Agricultural Bill. I know that this will test the moral compass of some in government, but failure to deliver is simply not an option. There is a significant opportunity for you, Secretary of State, and for government as a whole to lead this agenda in upholding our food values through public procurement, ensuring that our hospitals, that our schools, that our Ministry of Defence wherever possible, are sourcing British food. Because, Secretary of State, the farmers of Scotland, the farmers of Northern Ireland, the farmers of Wales and England are ambitious. We want to be the most sustainable farmers in the world, and we stand ready to work with you. Thank you.